Hey guys, so recently I was recommended on my YouTube Shorts feed a clip from Matt Dillahunty, the atheist champion that always defeats religious people with facts and logic by storming out of debates in fits of rage when they get heated. Yeah, it's this guy again. I've done a couple response and reaction videos to his stuff in the past, but this is a short clip of him trying to make a case against God. It's not that good. It's typical atheist reasoning. It can be rebutted. It's it's not that great, but it is pretty common. So I figured that I would give this a response since it's so short. So let's let's get started. I have no idea specifically what would change my mind about the existence of a god. Okay. But if there is such a being as a god, then one would think that that god knows exactly what would change my mind okay. and should be capable of taking the action to present the case that would change my mind. Sure. And this hasn't happened, which means that either this God does not exist or this God doesn't want me to know that he exists yet. Either way, it's not my problem. So this is a false dichotomy because in, in making this dichotomy, he's eliminated the possibility of a third option. And there is a third option, which I will present. But it's, it's a narrow selection of two choices, and they're not the only two choices. Okay, So he is trying to set up the idea that I don't think God exists because I haven't been shown sufficient evidence that God exists. I don't know what this evidence could be, but God knows it. God hasn't showed it to me, therefore God either doesn't exist or doesn't want me to know who he is. That's his position. Now, he leaves out a critical component that kind of defeats his argument. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to you what that is. So in Christianity, we have the concept of free will and we also have the concept of God letting you decide whether you want to follow him or not, letting you exercise your free will. And should you choose not to not to follow him and, and that you just despise him, he will not bother you, so to speak. He will not attempt to convince you and try to convert you. And Matt here has consistently denounced the Bible, has consistently denounced God, has consistently denounced Christian morality, all the time this guy does it. It's basically his whole career to to do that kind of stuff. So do you really think, Matt, that even if God does exist, that he is going to show you any evidence when you yourself very likely do not want anything to do with God, even if he does exist, right? It It's just, no, it doesn't make any sense. And as for, oh, God hasn't shown me, I don't know, and that, that means that God probably doesn't want me to know he exists. Well, no, that's just nonsense. What if he just knows that there's nothing that will change your mind? What if he's just letting you go your own way? Like, if he didn't let you go your own way, you'd call him a tyrant. And if, and if he does, you'd just say he doesn't exist. So, like, either way, there's no winning for the theist. You see what's wrong here. All right, let's keep going. This prevents me from, first of all, pretending that I can tell the difference between an amazing technology that I don't understand and real, honest to goodness, magic, supernatural oh, powers. Arthur C. Clarke had pointed out that a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And that's true. All right. So I don't understand why this point comes up so much because it's not good, like at all and completely misunderstands how theists, who are the religious people, how they argue and how they present their arguments, and a complete misunderstanding of the arguments themselves. Like this, is, this is a non-point. And you, as an atheist activist who has been doing this basically his whole career, you should know that this is just utter nonsense. Okay, Because you are fully aware that the arguments that we use like, I don't know, argument for mathematics, transcendental argument, the fine-tuning argument, the cosmological argument, the arguments for the reliability of the Bible, the arguments for the historicity of the resurrection, 
all of those arguments, which are our, all powerful arguments, have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with any kind of technology. Like, at all. Like, a lot of those have to do with the fact that we are even here. The fine-tuning argument, which is a powerful argument, has to do with the fact that there are so many factors in this universe that if they were just a, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit different, we'd be gone. We wouldn't even have existed. That has nothing to do with any kind of technology. I don't understand why you guys say this and think that you're so smart. If there's an event that I observe and I don't have an explanation for it, I don't get to just conclude that it's supernatural. I have no idea. All right. So this is what you guys always try to invoke against. It's called the God of the Gaps fallacy, right? And you guys always try to say that we use this, but we do not, okay? Because the arguments that we use, fine-tuning, again, is an awesome example of this, is not trying to say, oh, we don't know, therefore God. It's the only logical explanation is that there's a designer or fine-tuner in this argument's case. So let me state that argument again. There are so, so, so many factors in this universe that if they were just a tiny little bit different, we would be gone. We would have never even existed in the first place if they had been different. The only logical explanation that isn't a massive leap of faith when you see how astronomically low the chances of those things happening is, is that there was a designer. There's nothing else to it. It's no, oh, we don't know, therefore God. It's God is the only logical option unless you want to take a massive leap of faith. Okay, so that was Matt Dillahunty's not great case against God. Um, I will keep making these if I keep finding more of these, but... Hopefully that helps anybody who is uh, trying to learn how to defend this kind of stuff. Maybe if you're on the fence, this, this kind of showed you the, the bad arguments that these guys use. I don't know if they're being like deliberately dishonest or if they just genuinely don't understand where our arguments come from and how they work or, or what it is. But either way, I hope this contributed in some way to the discourse and I will see you guys in the next one.